actually recommend the day three continuation for the Jan 11 impacts. So what we will do is uh, look at where we stopped last time on day two, and then we're gonna move forward from there. So starting with that Excel, here is where we started to develop our overall approach and plan, right team? So primarily what we've done is that uh, we said that fair enough, we can do a lot with IE, but how do we now run the test with our team or the threat and what are we to do about it? So once we get into it, I will be able to tell you where the IE stops to help and why do we have that need now to do the same thing using a remote control or something called a server or something called as a web driver inside your system, okay? So to do that, we are continuing to go in the same pattern. So I said everything we start with ID, at least for this one. Do we start with ID every time even at a project that we execute at work? No, not necessarily. We can start directly uh, using our Java code. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna start off team with going to our Selenium ID, right? I'm gonna launch up the ID and let me take a format to explain it. Um, now I'm gonna do a control O and open the last um, test case that we created using ID. So if I get commands here, CS and T, let's see if I can give us some commands. So far so good team, day one, day two, this is what we did, right? And we started to see how we could write our own X paths for every element that we need, right? Now here are the steps if you observe that got generated or we could write on our, on our own in a IDE. Now, why do I need to take it into a different application like Java and so on? What is the need for it? Let me give you a quick walk down of the team using a notepad and pad, right? The whole point team is your IDE is very limited in its capacity in the sense that with ID, you can do a basic record and a basic run, okay? But if I need to do anything kind of frameworks where I'm trying to test the same set of um, test case repeatedly for changing sets of data, or I want to put some conditions in the sense that if this is the value, do this. Or I want to do a lot of verification in the sense that um, has the test passed or failed, or if I want to generate reports, or if I want to repeat certain sets many number of times, or I want to create something called as functions as reusable components and call it. Lots of differences where your IDE is limited. It's a very basic initial level. What does this RC do remote control on the Selenium server? The idea there is that we have everything that happens on the application is on a browser, right? Your browser has the application in it, correct? Your IDE is able to interact with this browser on a Firefox browser directly, okay? That is what the IDE does. We can interact with the browser directly. Now, those conditions, loops rather, and it's trying to repeat the same steps or generate errors in the reports and so on. As we move forward, there's so much required. To do that, I need to get into a programming level, okay? Programming can be done, in, at least for Selenium as a tool, using various programming languages. The concept of programming is this. Once you learn one language, to the extent that you need, you don't need to master a whole programming language like a developer is expecting you, but you need to know significant bits. Whatever you need to know, we will cover as part of the training, okay? That programming is, is basically going to enhance those steps and let them run on, and let them decide what to do on the application. But for these languages to run, and give instructions that, hey, click on this link in the browser, click on do this, do that. They need something in between. That's called as the Selenium server, all right? So all the instructions that I give, I give it to a middleman called Selenium server through my programming language, and which we will see now. And the Selenium server in turn goes and performs those on the application, okay? 
that is the good news okay so i need something called as a selenium server and i need a programming language now a different version of this programming develops more recently that is called as your web driver what this web driver does is you can run the same programs the code will look different a little bit but instead of running it through server as a middle layer you can run that directly onto that application okay the same programs little modifications to make you convert it into something called as a web driver and you can bypass the selenium server nicely you don't need any more people to use it you can go directly so we started at the ide we saw very briefly how it works on the application now we will go with pro we will take java jn preferentially as the coding language and we will see how we can run our initial request through server or something called as the rc rc was the old one selenium server is the new one we rc is like a remote control okay through this i can do a lot of things i can also say this is running on a let's say firefox but i can run the same test on different browsers like chrome uh, some your safari your uh, internet explorer also mobile devices like um, using web driver you can do it on a iphone browser or a android browser which is specific to see the applications that have been built to show how they look on uh, mobile for example your chain or your bank of america or um, let's say your weather.com all of these have these applications right so there's something like m dot uh, weather.com or m dot uh, bank of america or whatever so the way these applications look differently on these browsers are different and hence you need those mobile browsers so a lot can be done as part of this okay so let's start exploring i don't cover mobile testing in general uh, but i will try and add some sessions on how we can do the same things on iphone as well will it be recorded or we as part of the slides we have to see that all right so now the first few things that i need to do is i have i am right now at this level where i have selenium uh, ide with this base experiment so i'm going to delete this experimental thing that we did just to learn how gxpath works save this as let's say csl4 all right now the first thing i need to do is convert this this what is there is just text everything selenium requires is output the command the target and value it runs but now i want to run it through the programming language called java to do that i need a different looking code i need a code that i can take and run it as a java program how can we do that selenium id can automatically convert this text into different formats and those formats are typically available out here you will not see any formats out here initially like yesterday if you go let let me show you what i mean so basically uh, when we went on this yesterday you saw that the format has not all these things displayed the reason is um, it is still experimental they still have a few defects to fix on it but most need uh, most whatever we need from our requirement standpoint it works quite well all right so if you go to options to see the different formats come to options go to options and then you can check these things think quick check is my audio good probably if anyone has an issue you'll have to check at your end all right thanks so go to options go to options in here there's something called as enable experimental methods check this when you check this what it does is it lets us use those experimental features that are available in our code and click on okay all right now go back to options and you will see the different formats that we can see displayed in here so if i say test ng remote control and click on okay this is exactly the method that i just told you about experimental methods click on okay you will see the same code in a different format now all right if i go here and say format is junit4 remote control you will see the same code which we saw the command target value converted 
good job of it. Now, we will take this and we want that more aggressive. Okay? We will start with the basic J unit code today and then we will move to a test example. Now, what we have is the source code. Do we know anything about it? Not really. We will get there. But all I'm going to do is copy this and just take a simple new text file. All right? And just say uh, PSL4 underscore J unit underscore source. Just the name of a text file. And I'm going to put this there. What does it do? What does it mean? Right now, not bothering. We will come to that. Okay? I'm going to save this. Now, what I basically have is I have created this code. How do we run this code? So, to run a Java code tool, we have various different types of options. The option that I recommend and the tool that I use uh, for maintaining a Java code and so on is the Eclipse platform. Eclipse is again a free tool. Okay, it's an open source tool. You can go and do a search. Actually, all the installation documents are there on that. Um, if you search for Eclipse IDE installation, Eclipse IDE installation, okay, you will find the links of how you can get the Eclipse, eclipse.org slash download. You can go here and download. The whole documentation of how you can download this is available, depending on your Windows version, you can get that, okay? If you want, you can also use the download of the entire folder that is there in the Selenium script set file, okay? If you go in here, you will see the all files underscore Eclipse. So you can click on this and download this file. It's about 180 of these. And just unzip it and copy that entire code. So basically, I did the same thing some time back because I didn't run, have Eclipse earlier on this. I downloaded that folder, this file from that service. And now I've taken, when I unzip it, all I did is I created, I just dragged the whole container into my C drive. And that comes under Eclipse. Okay. What is this Eclipse? Eclipse simplest definition is a place where I can store my Java code or write my Java code, edit it, save it and run it. Whatever I want to do with Java in terms of running those and so on, I can do it from Eclipse. Okay, That is a platform to which I can execute a lot of things related with my code and so on. That is the thing we definitely do. Now, what is this J unit and test and G? What are they? How are they related to Java? I'll come to it very shortly. But let's do a run of this and launch it. I created the J unit code of that IDE script and we put it into our folder in J11 out here. Now I'm saying I need a place from there I can run this code. Now what I'm doing is I've launched it. So just in that folder, I double clicked on Eclipse, the application, eclipse.bmx file. Once I do that, your Eclipse launches. There are lots of features between these two. There are so many things that can be achieved out of this, okay? Do not worry about too many things. Just go from the very basic things, all right? The latest version of Java is always recommended. So what I would recommend is that you go to java.com to run any of these things, you need the latest version of Java. So just go to java.com, click on free Java download and start your download of the latest version. Whatever version, this is called as JDK versions and so on, Java Development Kit, you can download it directly from there. All right. All of these documentations have been sent to you as part of the welcome pack as well. Right. How to install Java Eclipse and everything is part of your welcome pack as well. Now, if you go to file, okay, so, team, so far so good. This is, again, when many new tools, many new things, so you may have to repeat it while watching this video. You may have to perform the same things offline. It will help you practice. Trust me, it takes a little bit of practice. It takes a little lot of effort on your end to get there. If you just watch things, it's all theory. You have to practice. So watch the video and practice as well. Now, what after you have done with Eclipse, what do we do now? 
and what this process will do is you will start with something called as pi new java project what this is is basically saying that now you will start a completely new java project when i do that i will get to name that project so i'm going to call this as j11 underscore pdf one what is this j11 is the jam 11 class pdf is data driven framework project one all right and just say finish don't do anything else for this you will see that getting generated out here okay this is like your sidebar just like your windows explorer you have an explorer tool out here all right what i've done is created a new project that is step one everything else is gray out here you have something called as console and lot of other pieces out here we will come to whatever we need to use eventually now after we have done that see what we will do is if we expand and we go there is a subfolder in this java project that we created called src that is the source code here is where i can create different projects uh, different i mean this is something called as a package i can put all my code as part of this folder or create a new one so for the basic level we will keep things as is and create new java classes out here now comes the technical part okay what is this java j init test engine java is a programming language right it took um, over a decade and a half or more for java to develop and come to where it is today okay it started off as very powerful simple uh, programming language and then new features kept getting added to it kept getting added to it and so on as that happened java is open source i mean basically there's no license fee for someone who wants to use java just the hardware is different and so on different other investments come in but no license fee goes in so a huge user community started to grow okay so java usage started very slow and then probably and you know eventually started growing very rapidly um, not necessarily great representation of these facts but giving you a perspective on it with that there's a lot of new people who are using java for different things some people are using it to build applications like what you see in the web based applications or simple windows based application like notepad or excel or a powerpoint all of this you've installed on your app system and they're running so you could use a programming language to develop such tools and be able to produce results out of it so this is saying how application should be built that's your programming right so as new the usage has started to happen uh, the it's just not no longer developers who are trying to develop new applications and so on what has happened is there's a lot of usage in different things and one of the usage is that the developers also wanted to test their own code if that is working correctly or not they wanted to do testing and uh, the testing that the developers typically get done is called as your unit testing all right unit testing is basically saying that whatever pieces of code that the developers are doing they will try and test it themselves before they move it on to the next part before we come in and say that hey your code is working correctly or not the developers will try and test it out themselves that basically they refer to as unit testing now if they need to successfully do unit testing they basically didn't have any automation tools so now as the usage of java has increased the community has developed something called as a better way to be able to test their own java code and they have built something called as a j unit okay j unit is nothing but the a subset of java or something that has been derived out of java with predefined specific information as to what to do and so on they're like shortcuts okay everything has a purpose and those are called as your annotations they start with a letter a character called as your annotation like you know we call as this those have been built together and it's called now as a j unit framework okay j unit was derived to help programmers or developers be able to effectively test and improve the test uh, the uh, how they do their own tests on their own code for their own unit tests and that's how j unit arise okay so with a few more additional features to it came up test engine
Okay, that's the next level as sequential of test entry. All right, test entry. These are nothing but they are still based on Java coding. They still have everything related with Java, but they have a few more. They have something specific with JUnit, and these are something specific with TestUnit. They have specifically, they have basically created something that a developer can take in readily, and those are nothing but annotations. Okay, that is what we need them for. All right. So if someone says that I know JUnit very well and says that I don't know Java, it doesn't make sense because JUnit is nothing but the whole of Java. Okay, plus these about a dozen different annotations. That's it. A dozen different predefined rules and same thing is this is nothing but test entry is nothing but the whole of Java and a little bit of the this not necessary when I say the whole of Java whatever they use to whatever extent they get all right so as part of our training we will focus on both JUnit and test entry in the sense we will use Java extensively but we will also see what are these JUnit annotations and test entry annotations how do we use them? How do we apply them? But the core, you have to understand that we are using Java for it. All right. So now, if you look at in this source, I can create something called as Java class. Okay, which is better to use as a tester? Um, not sure. I mean, see, lot of people love JUnit. Lot of people love test entry. I love Java. That's the core thing. I can do everything with Java. Test NG has better error reporting. The reporting is more revised. Uh, there is more um, predefined information that comes out out of the tests when you execute them in Test NG. So Test NG has been more refined versions of JUnit. Okay. So typically Test NG seems to be a little more easier to work with, but actually it doesn't matter because our reporting we will do it differently. Everything we will do differently using Telenet. So you can use anything, okay? But as is test a little more popular if you look at it. But JUnit, they say, is a little more easier to work with. There is nothing. If you learn Java, you have learned almost everything. JUnit is just a five percent more learned. test -NG is just another six percent more learned. That is it, okay? Now the next step is on the source. If I right click and say new and go to and click on this class. What it does is it creates something called as a Java class. Okay, that is your starting point. All right, from here we can go about doing whatever we want. So what are these classes? Don't worry, forget theory. Once you start using them, it becomes very easy for you to understand what they are. Okay, if I'm going to say DDF1 underscore C, I wanted to name this as DDF1 underscore bus. I'll right click and click on um, there's no rename here. What I can do is just click F F2 and I can rename it DDF1 underscore bus. Okay. So what I've done is I've created something called as a Java class. Do you see this? See public class DDF1 underscore bus. What are these pub words public class this and this open and close curl bracket? That is the syntax of a Java programming language. Okay. Everything that you see now on this white screen has a specific meaning. Every line has a specific meaning. Okay. The good part is I don't have to go about creating all the code from scratch, at least for the first try, for this tutorial. Then how are we going to do it? The way we will do it is you remember that code that we generated and put it in the text document, right? If I double click, I can copy this whole code. Okay. And take this whole code, code and put it in here. Now, do you see this whole code? This is your Java code. Okay. This is entire coding is Java, but what we are using is JUnit. Okay. So now the first thing that we have to do see is to know that this red cross is out here is basically saying that Eclipse is telling us that I don't understand this command or there is an error in this command. Can you please fix it? So unless Eclipse understands every line and is able to recognize what to do, when we run this code, it does not know what to do. Okay. For example, if you go to any application, okay, you right click and say use code. You 
you see the HTML code for this application type that is just output somewhere on here right so unless this code is written correct correctly the output out here will not be correct okay for a web based application HTML is the programming language okay it basically not a very advanced language but a simple markup language okay very simple language Java is the more complex so depending on this code the output will vary all right they do different things so that's the first thing we did what have we done we have created a new project under the source I did a right click and I said new class and then I gave the name the first thing we need to give in is the class name that we gave here can you see this vdf1 underscore one yeah this name should be the same as the name that we see here public class instead of csl4 i'm going to say vdf1 underscore one that is the first thing we need to do why because whatever is the name i should have something called as a class in it okay just take some of my statements at face value as we develop you will learn some of these things if we try and go in depth about each word what would happen is we will have so many things to learn you will give up very quickly rather we will what have we learned we have learned some of those commands uh, how to recognize x path how to then perform some actions on the application so we'll focus here that is something we understand we will get there with some of the java code okay now the second thing you do is this package com example dot test whatever is it delete it okay here is my java code as i did it now let me save it as soon as i save it that file has got saved okay in my eclipse folder i've created this new package and that's where i've saved it now there are lots of query boxes can you see this yeah so what are these now i have to tell eclipse that hey eclipse this java class that you created whatever vdf1 underscore one whatever you created has to use selenium it has to know selenium number one it has to know j number two okay what does it mean as is the eclipse or any java code when i say eclipse team i'm just meaning eclipse is a storing place to give java uh, scripts java code and everything java comes very lean as it is okay but there are powerful things like called as packages that are or jar files they're basically archive files that we can use so if i say that hey this java code requires to know j in it then i have to link something called as a jar file okay these are nothing but java archives okay what are these java archives the community of users who've been using java over a period of time have created certain meaningful reusable code so they have created one code and said hey you don't have to create this code every time okay i've created these three or four blocks of code you readily use them whenever you want okay if my java code has to use them then we have packaged all of these strings together into one jar file and then i'll say that whenever i want to use any of this already defined code we will just call it okay so i just have to link these jar files together so did selenium selenium has created a similar thing for java okay it has created specific thing what do i mean by the specific thing things like so you got this picture right team things like what is the selenium dot code what does it mean when someone this should actually if i pass some information tell the application or the java code to go to that application find a uh, element with a specific x path in that user file and go and click on it all of these steps have been predefined in a specific jar file okay those are your selenium jar files okay and the other things are all of these things now making sense team again as i told you new topics you need to review them a couple of times you need to go through them then it will slowly start to fall in place right now what i need are these jar files if i go to my folder c colon slash selenium i have already downloaded these jar files out here okay i have something called as uh, do you see this 
Selenium Java Jar file, Selenium Server Jar file. You see this JUnit Jar file. Okay, where are these coming from? JUnit Jar. You can directly download it. You can just do a Google search. You will find it or use it as is. Okay, different version. Selenium Server Standalone or Selenium Server Jar file. You go to Selenium Server SeleniumHQ.org. download selenium and now for java you have the jar file out here you see this download okay and so on the best thing to do is forget about all of these individual jar files and just download the latest selenium server okay just download the selenium server once you download this you will be able to do a lot of things all right so selenium server is basically that jar files so that all of these commands can be start to get implemented right so now with those jar files already created out here i can readily use it if you want to get a quick start what you can do is on the screen cap um, not only do we have that eclipse but i also have something called as all files underscore jar you can download this this has all those jar files that i've just shown you okay so you can readily start to use them you don't need to go and download everything separately from jar files now i will tell that this uses those jar files how do i do that so you go to your project go to your right click on the main um, your whole project go to your properties in here and under the java build path do you see something called as the java build path here is where i will say that i will use certain external jars so basically, these are all add-ons. Okay, uh, as is your your if you're driving a car, basically, do you want a GPS inbuilt? Do you want a backup camera? Uh, do you want alloy wheels or regular wheels? Do you need a sun roof or a moon roof? Um, do you want a sports version, leather interior? All of these are what exter external. Or if you're building a house, you have to see different upgrades, right? So you get a base. That's your Java core Java. Anything that we need to use additionally. We have to link those jar files in here. Okay. Now click on this add external jar and select those jars from that folder, whichever you want. Let's first select the J unit. Okay. Now I could say open and say okay to this. Once I say okay, observe that a lot of these red crosses have disappeared. Do you see this red cross has disappeared? Have I explained each of the steps yet? No. I'm just showing how to make things work first. First, we make it work, then we can get into the coding part of it. Okay? Had I not had these, there were more red crosses here, and this, those annotations you remember I told you with that and symbol are all out of here. Okay? So these are, I'm basically saying that we will now start to just cross recognize because that jar file has been accessed. Now, similarly, I will right click, go to the properties, go to my Java build path, and the selenium server jar okay this is also selenium server and this is also just a short name but i'll take the same thing it is 2.5.0 version what is the latest one that is on website 2.16 so i think we are okay it doesn't matter so it's it's probably a little more um, features got added into it but i think this could also work okay if things don't work then we can always upgrade to the latest version Okay, so we're going to take this open and say okay. Now observe if any of the other things get recognized out here, like red crosses get eliminated. Do you see a lot of red crosses getting eliminated? <coughs> Sorry. In fact, almost everything got eliminated. Okay, so at this point, what we have done is we have created a code that is correct to look at. Will it perform correctly or not? Different thing. At least from a Selenium's per from a Java perspective, there is no error in trying to execute it. Okay, to understand it better. All these things as exclamation is just a warning. You don't have to worry about them so much at the moment. Okay, if you do your mouse over, you will see. The beauty of Eclipse Tool is these kind of simple help. See, that red cross of line it cannot understand. Um, it will give you all the features.
this is to be able to store the right currency different colors depending on the type of code and everything so all these are built in to just to make your coding easier all right now with this done i don't even have to say it's already saved okay and i don't see any more red crosses that's the first thing how do we remove those red x basically remove all the errors before we run it all right now we get to the next level so what is the first level we have the eclipse ready we created a new project we created a new class then we got the code that we got from ide we put it out here and we associated only two jars junit jar and the selenium server jar once those two jars have been associated with our dev i could see that the code seems to be more uh, ready to be used now what we going to do is run the steps how or run this java code forget about step 2 i'm just using the word test because finally it's automation step 2 but this dds1 underscore 1 dot java is ready for us to get executed or to run to run this what i need to do is go here and you can either click on this or go to run as click on this uh, drop down and say run as java j unit test easy this you can run as java application so on you gonna run it as a j unit test once you say you run it as a j unit test the execution starts to happen okay now it starts to interact with you and say hey i tried to run like how we saw in ide when we did a run we got that failure or pass and so on and where it failed and all that information even this this is also an ide this is an integrated development environment and so is this eclipse only thing is eclipse is the more more powerful ide where you can do a lot of uh, development on java code it tells us exactly what happened we tried to run it took about one second to run we had one uh, uh, error out of one run okay and where did that error occur it is telling us exactly saying that test csl4 whatever it is wherever it is see this one test csl4 this is where the error occurred what are these what are these names different names that have automatically come we have not gone to the code yet but if you go to the failure trace it will tell us in a very detailed fashion what happened okay the first one typically is a summary of the error okay now you have to do the trial and error thing okay you will follow the process you will follow what is needed but as you encounter issues you have to start to fix them so you find an issue you fix it and you run it out you find another issue you fix it and you run it out so there's a lot of trial and error you try get an error you repeat change something go back as you build this you will build a lot of expertise you will get better at doing this all right what is this error it says could not contact selenium server uh, have you started it on local host 440 so what does this mean basically the whole point here now get very interactive okay i have created in my eclipse i have created a successful java or a j unit code okay right now i'm saying here is my browser and my application is there listed in here all right so i want to take this code and run it out here to do this run for my selenium server needs to be as the middle point okay my code will talk to the selenium server and the selenium server in turn will talk to the application and it is going to be a two way communication okay so to do that we need to create a private channel where this communication can happen okay and those are called as a port node all right it's a technical term but the easiest way to understand this is it is a specific communication channel your uh, the police is communicating on a specific frequency right your fm changes or something so if you want to li listen to your favorite radios you have to tune to their um, station because they are communicating on that channel okay if you want to listen to something else you switch your station right so it's like walkie talkies where do you want to communicate and my eclipse the one which we are using right now has to communicate on the same port number with the server so they both understand okay so to do this the first thing i have to do is something called as run or launch the selenium server on a specific port number okay then i have to instruct 
that the Selenium server is running on this port number. Let's say 1234 or 4444, whatever it is. Okay. And I take this number and provide this number in my Java code. So that Selenium server is now ready to communicate with our runtime code. And the Java code has to know which port number to run it on. All right. To do that, basically the step, where do you see this local host? Comma uh, colon 4444. Do you see this here? Have you started it on local host colon 4444? Where do we see that in the code? Do you see this out here, team? There is a number called 4444 and local host. Here is the starting point where we are saying where is the Selenium server to take it. My Java code is here, it is already saying 4444. Now I will go back and run my selenium server on that port how do we run it okay here is my server okay that is where my servers are i have to say that i have to be running this to run this what i need to do is if i open this on this server if i open this right click and then save it i have to go to this specific folder i basically okay two ways team one is what you see here, the harder way, you start with your run and do something called as cmd. That's your command prompt. Okay, command prompt is a different way of looking at your whole directory and so on. You can do some specific execution from it. So, cd dot dot is a command that will take you back to C drive. Okay, basically it's going one folder down. Like you navigate on the folders out here, you do the same thing. Okay. Now, the first thing I need to do out here is cd selenium. What cd selenium does is change the directory itself. Okay. cd dot dot is taking it one level back. cd space, the name of the directory we take away. Now, if I say dir, that is a command which lists down all the folders that are in files that are present in that directory. Okay. Selenium directory um, and here are all the files that are present. Alright. Now, what this command is doing out here is the same thing. It's saying let's change the directory to where the jar file is. This, that is the first function. That is what we've done here so far. Okay. This, no, actually not yet. I have to go to cd space jar. Okay. There is my jar. In this, if I do directory, I see all the jar files and all the files that we um, have in the folder here the same thing is displayed now the second step is to put this command in here what does it mean i have to say java hyphen jar what is this this is a command saying that i want to run a jar file as a java file in here in this directory display now i have to name that file the name of that file is whatever you see here Okay, the whole thing I go and put in here. I will say selenium okay, server hyphen stand alone hyphen 2.5.0 dot jar. Okay, that is the whole command. And then the final thing I'm saying is we've, this is basically an instruction to launch the server. I have to now say on which port. I'm set port. 4444. When I hit enter and if my command is correct, it will now launch the Selenium server on that port. Okay. All the steps that we saw, the two steps performed on this CMD, this command prompt thing out here team, you can do the same thing in a very easy fashion. Just take a text file, right click, say new text document um, and let's name this as server underscore launch underscore 4444 that is the name i give it okay in this all i will do is first same thing as this copy this whole thing and put it here okay the second command is this copy this whole thing and put it out here but instead of port four, one two three four five one two three five i have four 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 making sense team everyone good so far things are coming up uh, as an instruction so you have to definitely practice it 
if they're in security issues, how do we know what port to use? So there are few generic things. There are some ports which different devices, drivers, and applications which are already using on your system. Okay, so you can use a different combination. Typically, try and keep it as a four-digit uh, number. You can write one two three one or one 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 one, etc. There are certain port numbers which are already being used. Okay, so you don't need more than three or four ports initially. Once we get to the grid, then when you start to watch the grid, you will see you can launch different servers on different ports and do a parallel execution of it. Okay, but for this, just take any of these. I've used actually a lot of them. So you'll see, see one two three four, one two three five, one two three six, four 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 four. You can use any of these standard ones. Now, the only difference is I've changed this port number. Now I'm going to do an alt F A N T. Save this not as a text file. I'm going to set save it as all file. But the extension that I give to this is called .dat or Apache. Okay. Created a text. Put these two statements. And now I said let's create a dot .dat. Once I did that, instead of saying text document, I selected all file. And then I gave an extension. I said save. Okay, this is now saved. If you notice, where is this? As a Windows batch file. The text version of it is out there, but this is the one which is now a Windows batch file. If I double click this, it will perform the same step that I've shown you out here, changing the directory to where those jar files are, and then launching that Selenium server. So instead of me having to do through the command prompt, this is a good shortcut. All right. Now I can close this command prompt and let's try it. So just double click. If it is working correctly, it should have launched the Selenium server in the background somewhere. Okay. Sometimes you will be able to see it. Sometimes you don't. Um, was in fact for the first run itself but that's okay now my selenium server is hopefully running in the background you don't see a command prompt being executed anywhere but sometimes you can go to your task manager see if it is uh, working at one of the processes as well okay you don't have to worry too much about it it should be working in the background by now now the best way to test it is rerun your test run as jinx test okay standard selenium server localhost 4444 why hasn't it already started that is the command we gave here server underscore launch oh. i click edit cdc colon slash selenium jar dot dot jar same run currently has started is there any pop-up message that is blocking this no not yet okay let me try and do the same thing using command prompt and see what's happening where is that jinx event dot jar let's try the same thing and click it okay same command so the first thing should go is cd all this is correct okay dot jar and then port number i think four 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 java oh it is not letting me even run this java okay so what happens is sometimes 
is it may take a very short output circuit or sometimes it can take even a long circuit now let's see if i go to my program files and go to this java here is where my jdk has been installed okay sometimes i need to change the path to how this is getting the information how my java is doing is java really not installed on the system no java is present otherwise eclipse also will not run okay you if you want you can see um, this is the first thing in fact we have to do one of the first thing is java properly install or not this is where we'll have to install the java thing and if i go to jre and the bin folder here is the java application this is where it's been installed the java 6 version is here so if i double click the java is now running in the background let's see again sorry i'm still not able to see oh there's a reason for that all i have to do is go to the path i think um, did i send across um, let me see let me see um, there was an instruction document about exactly how to take care of this that is but that's got nothing to do with um, this error but in general whenever you get the errors you have to look at your overall path instruction here so team what i will do is offline since we already put the time i'll create a small video about if java is not successfully installed then what to do you have to change the uh, path variable that is there for your system to be pointing to that folder where java is present okay that should be changed in your overall path so i am going to do that create a small um, video out of it and make sure that it points there so basically once i go to my environment variables here you will see something called as a variable called as a path okay this path sometimes does not have a pointer to this thing so let me just create a small thing out of it see you see that c colon there is this two values right so if i right click and say edit address i get the entire address okay i'll copy this use a semicolon at the end and paste this here what i'm telling by doing this is the anytime i can run java from anywhere the java.exe application can be run from anywhere the same thing i will give you in a small document as instructions if you put it up and you call you create a small video out of it let me just show you this so that anytime you can pick it up and run it but let me try with this one sometimes the only issue i'm saying is that i have to restart this one sometimes it is needed to restart it then i can run it let me give it a few tries let's see what happens i think once i restart i should be able to do it but otherwise it has now changed path variable edit path variable so what is needed is present this has to be a restart and see if it's working or not so team i'm going to do a restart and uh, see if it's working or not right um, but i can't use restart with if i'm holding up the session so team uh, any questions put into the run we will do the run tomorrow i just have to make sure that it is working what is a good source to le learn scripting for creating dot pat files not too much oksana the only few batch files that i need to create right now are for this okay and when you want to run your java as application externally also you can do it but the jar launching the server is the only batch file that we need at this point right any space at the end of port number no madhu i don't think there is any issue with the space my java itself is not yet tuned to run that is the reason team any other questions corporate level also is the four digit port number is standard yeah typically standard uh, rama but um, you can see that's the reason you'll also see 4444 as the default port number that is most widely used but again this can be widely used more often so you try and move to a different one so you can use one two three four one two three five but you can survive with 4444 at least for your practice what does starting the server do what does starting the server is launching an application which can be the mediator for our java code to interact with the browser okay this code as is cannot go and execute commands on an application 
okay the server is the one which is staying or it's like a remote control which is going through that so the server is sitting in between to take instructions from here perform it on the applications and the other way around you are given a jar pad how do you know how do you unit test that rama i think that be a good question for you to put it into the google meet anything linked with today's session is what is more uh, applicable for the entire audience please deep questions you have to start server per hour when we are using this type of a port the server needs to be running at a specific port number else you will not be able to execute it when we come to web driver web driver will let us bypass the server concept we don't have to have the um, server running but for this we'll need fine team uh, that's it for today then we'll see you back tomorrow and what we will do is um, i will also create a small documentation of how to make sure that your java is in process so first in fact check that we I just started putting all the things that I needed a couple of hours before this, so it's pretty slow. So port four 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 is now it was starting the app. Anything you can use any port name doesn't matter. If I write port four four four, then I launch it there. If I write one two three four here, then I will launch the server on that port. So depending on they both have to be in sync. That's the criteria. Okay, when I do the test tomorrow, it will be more comfortable for you. Thank you. Bye for now. We'll be back tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye for now.